Santa's Workshop 2017. It's December 22nd, 4.30, and we've got a good fire on in the wood furnace there. Warming up the shop here. It's time to make some more Christmas gifts. And as usual, yeah, I left it kind of a little bit on the late side. So this year, I'm going to make uh, three live edge serving platters. A couple out of these pieces of black cherry, and here's a piece of uh, white ash. And I actually split the white ash and then glued it back together down the seam. And you can see in the back there, between the sapwood and the heartwood, where I glued it back together. I've really never done much with uh, live edge. I've always considered a waned edge a poor edge, but it seems to be all in vogue now. And then I'm going to cut some kind of a serving platter, sort of a cutting board type thing, out of this piece of ash for my wife. This is out of a log that had a huge blemish right here. And I took the two mating pieces after slicing them in the sawmill, flipped it back over and I glued them together, run them through the planer and it's about an inch thick now. So I've got lots to work with but this grain structure is absolutely beautiful. Isn't that tremendous? Sort of like a quilted maple in a way. I'm looking forward to see how that turns out. And the next project I'm going to make is some Swedish butter knives. I've got some uh, bird's eye maple I ripped into these quarter inch strips. Got some paducah, or African vermilion, this beautiful redwood for the handles. And Oh, just a little piece of black walnut left over from a job that uh, I'm going to use that as First well. step is to uh, lay out the shape of the knives, the shanks and the handles in this quarter inch bird's eye maple. Isn't that pretty material? And get some handles cut and glued on and then I'm going to start working on the cutting boards while the glue in the handles is cured. Well, I'd like to tell you that I used all sorts of artistic ability and the process of elimination, building prototype after prototype to come up with a design. <laughs> really? As usual, I googled it and I came up with some images, I copied them into a Word doc, printed them and cut them out with a pair of handy scissors here and this is a sort of one design for a Swedish butter knife. I kinda like that. And there's another knife that I've made a few of that I kinda like as well. This design here. So. I'm going to make our daughter, my daughters and my wife uh, one of each actually for Christmas. So all I do for the first one of, of them to make a, you know, a template other than a piece of paper is I use some <laughs> Elmer's glue, put it on the back of the paper, stick it to the wood, cut it out, peel it off, and there's the template. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do next. Not too scientific, but it's fast and it works well. You'll see that the blade is a little bit wide for doing this. I probably should have a quarter inch, maybe an eight tooth or ten tooth per inch blade, but uh, I do a little bit of resawing with this and uh, I just left that on and it'll work just fine for this cut. <laughs> cut. Now I just will go over to the sanders and we'll sand them out and then it'll be time to uh, cut some blanks for some animals. So the blanks are all cut out and sanded. I find the next thing to do that works well for me is to uh, actually sand the profile of the blade. It's easier when there isn't a handle on and when you've got a fairly square edge to work with. So the first thing I do is I take a pencil and I draw a center line. It's kind of a trick I learned building paddles when you're carving because once you start it can be hard to see where center is when you start taking material off either side. This way it gives you the confidence to work fairly fast. And I know it's not perfect but uh, it's pretty close to something.
There we go. And it's not quite finished as you can see. It's not a razor edge by any means, but I'll finish it with a palm sander when I'm all done. But it gives me the major part of the, the blade profiled, so it's much easier when I put the handle on now just to work around the handle and then give it a little finish sand and uh, presto, we should be done. Okay, next thing is let's trace some handles on. Now I put some reference lines on the, the blank here where I'd like the handle to come to. And all I do is I just line it up like this, put it on, keep it fairly straight, and presto. Now before I cut these out in the bandsaw, I like to put the bevel on where it's going to match right here to the blank. I find it's a lot easier to sand this on an angle, on a disc sander actually, than to work this with the uh, spindle sander and not to take anything away from the shank there. So I'm going to go over and I'm just going to sand these bevels. I'll, I'll trace the rest of the knife handles out. I'll sand all these bevels and then I'll cut them out with the pen. So now all the blanks are cut in half, all the edges are beveled, and you'll see... It's so much easier when I glue these together to keep a nice clean edge in this area here than trying to sand this with the spindle so sander. So now we'll go back to the bandsaw and cut all these handle blanks out. are all cut. Now we just have to marry them up with the knife blanks or the blades and glue them on and then wait for the glue to cure. So to do this I normally make a pencil line as a reference because I want to put glue on both sides but I want to keep it back just a little bit from this edge so I'll slide this back a little further than it really goes and then I can just make a very light pencil line as a reference mark and the same thing on this side. Then I know where to put the glue and where not to put the glue. Because we don't want glue or we don't want glue. I'm using Elmer's Probon Max. Uh, it's a waterproof glue. Use it building canoes, paddles, all sorts of things. I like it. I like the color of it. It's strong and it's waterproof. And that's important to me. Okay, there's the first one done. Now we'll just put a little bit. The, the older I get, the less glue I tend to use. <laughs> when I was younger, oh my goodness, squeeze out. I was more like Niagara Falls and it was a nice little bit of glue showing. There we go. We've got glue in both pieces. Let's put her together. make sure that these two edges here are even. That's important. So just get a little bit of a check. Looks good. Looks good. And I'm going to do it all three together in the clamp here. There we go. Nice little bit of squeeze out and everything's even. I'll just put that down by the furnace now to dry and we'll come back to it in an hour or so. Well the knives have been in the clamps for oh, a couple of hours. Let's take them out and have a look at them. There we go. So I'm going to take a wood chisel now and I'm going to trim off this uh, squeeze out. And then I will use the bandsaw and just clean them up. And then we'll take them back to the sander and sand the edges flush. Got a little too close to a sharp chisel. <laughs> and I didn't even know I'd done it actually until I started to leak. Okay, let's see if we can finish this off.
Well, the handles are on, they're glued in place. Trimmed back with a bandsaw, sanded nice and flush. Now it's time to round over these edges. So I'm gonna mount a round over bit in the rudder and we'll cut off all these edges. start sanding. Really that's the last of the process is just to finish sanding. I'm going to start off with 120 then we'll go to 150, 180 and we'll finish up with 220 grit paper. Well I can hear the snow plow going by. Oh that's too bad. I was actually hoping to take the snowmobile out for a rip down the road. Not very often our road, we have a fairly well maintained road and it's not very often that I can drive down the middle of the road, but we sure had enough snow today I could have. But the snow plow has just changed that. Anyhow, I have sanded all these. They feel as smooth and soft as a baby's bottom. Started off with 120 and ended up with uh, 220. 120, 150, 180 and 220. So now it's time to blow them off with some compressed air and uh, build a little rack to hold them somehow, like this I think, and put some clear coat on them. Now comes the exciting part. We get to see them come to life when we put the clear coat on. I'm using a product that I like to use on cutting boards actually. It's called Watco Butcher Block Oil and Finish. It's toxic when it's in the liquid state, but it's approved for food contact uh, once it's cured. I myself actually rather like a matte oil finish, satin finish, you know, no luster whatsoever, deep penetrating finish. This gives a shiny finish and a penetrating finish and people seem to really like a shiny finish more than they do a, an oiled flat finish. So that's how come I switched to this actually. Oh, that's beautiful. Just look how that uh Brings that walnut and the maple to life. Isn't that beautiful? That bird's eye maple is spectacular. There we go. There's one. Let's see what this paduk looks like. I bet it's something beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is simply gorgeous. Oh. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing how the clear coat just brings it to life. Isn't that beautiful? And here's the final presentation.